Manning's law allows us to calculate the average velocity or the volumetric flow rate in a stream as a function of the hydraulic gradient, the channel shape, the channel geometry, and the surface roughness. The hydraulic gradient in a stream is the change in water elevation, which is the change in head here, over the change in length. So essentially it's the slope of the water surface gives us the hydraulic gradient. And this is Manning's law. Here's the hydraulic gradient. It's to the one-half power. And this term here, HR, is the hydraulic radius. It's to the two-thirds power. And this is the surface roughness of the channel. In order to use this formula, you need to calculate the hydraulic radius. That's the cross-sectional area perpendicular to the flow. So if this is the channel, it would be the blue area, divided by the wetted perimeter, the length of this line here, the yellow line. So that ratio is the hydraulic radius. And n is the wall roughness, and it's a dimensionless parameter. So there's the cross-sectional area, and there's the wetted perimeter. If we've measured the um, if we measure, measured the depth profile uh, for doing the stream gauge, we can calculate the cross-sectional area and the wetted perimeter from that information. So we can compare the um, Darcy's law and the Manning's law. Um, they both give us the flux, or well, they both give us the flux. In the case of Manning's, the flux is also equal to the average velocity. So the flux in a porous media is going to be proportional to the head gradient, and hydraulic conductivity is the proportionality. In a conduit or a stream, the flux is proportional to the head gradient to the one-half power, and this is the proportionality. So there are, are quite a few similarities. They're both driven by the head gradient, but there are also some differences. Um, the primary difference is in this exponent, and the reason for that is that um, if you think about the head gradient, the hydraulic head is the energy in the flow, and so the head gradient is how rapidly the energy is lost in the direction of flow. And in a stream, the flow is turbulent, and so that turbulence causes the energy to be lost more rapidly um, per unit of flow than it does in a laminar flow. And this exponent is a result of that energy loss. That's why we have a one-half here for uh, the Manning's law and only one for the um, Darcy's law, because Darcy's law is only valid for laminar conditions. Another difference is this minus sign here in Darcy's law, and there's no minus sign you see here in Manning's law. The reason for that is because in Darcy's law, the gradient can be positive or negative. And so the minus sign gets us going in the right direction. It gets the flow to go in the down the hydraulic head gradient from high head to low head. And we know that's what we always want to have happen. But if we look at Manning's law, the hydraulic head gradient here is raised to the one-half power. And so as a result of that, this really needs to be an absolute value. We have to take the hydraulic head gradient and just take the, the positive absolute value of it. And because of that, we can't really get the Manning's law to determine which what the flow direction is. We have to already know what the flow direction is. And that's why there's no minus sign uh, in, the, in Manning's law. And the other difference is, um, is this term. In here we have k, and here we have um, the hydraulic radius divided by the roughness. In both cases, what we can do is think of, how, uh, of the, these terms as how we relate 
the flux to the driving gradient. So they are they're, they have a certain amount of uh, analogy there. So here's some graphics pointing out the differences and similarities. So the roughness of the bed is something that will cause resistance to flow in a stream. And here are some values of this roughness coefficient. A low value is for smooth metal. And this will be a relatively low amount of resistance to flow. And then it increases. And we see down here, dense willows uh, is one of the high value. I guess it's the highest in this table and it ranges from 0.1 to 0.2. So that's the range of n from about 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Um, and what we can do, though, is, well, so basically, if we, if we know the roughness, and we can measure the channel shape, and we can determine the gradient, then we can use Manning's Law to determine the flow. So we could look up the roughness in the table. But another way to do it is to calculate the roughness using Manning's Law and measuring all the various terms in Manning's Law. So if we do some stream gauging and measure flow rate, and we've got the channel dimensions, we can determine A, which is the cross-sectional area, and the hydraulic radius, which is the cross-sectional area divided by the wetted perimeter. And if we also measure the hydraulic head gradient, which you could do, for example, by uh, surveying the uh, elevation of the water surface in a stream in the direction of flow, if you know those things, then you can rearrange the Manning's formula to solve for n. And in that case, you would know all of this, and you could calculate what n is. Notice also that I have a factor of 1.49 here that wasn't in the previous formula. The reason for that is that um, that accounts for the units that are used in this formula. Um, this term here, this 1.49, it has units. And it has units that are, that are needed to basically cancel out these units to make n dimensionless. So if you're using Q in cubic feet per second, A in square feet, and hydraulic radius in units of feet, then you would use the 1.49 factor in Manning's Law.